Hi guys, in this video we're going to look at nervous signals and how they're moved along the surface of a neuron. Uh, we're going to talk about the nervous signals in general, then look at action potential, threshold potential, how that potential is propagated, as well as the refractory period. We say that neurons carry signals electrochemically, and this is because the change in chemicals uh, results in a change in electricity. And the main things that are moving here along the surface of the neuron are sodium and potassium ions, which are positively charged. Uh, however, between the two neurons, we have the synapse, which is a very small gap between the axon of one neuron and the dendrite of another. And across this, the communication is purely chemical. Uh, neurotransmitters are released from the axon or the presynaptic terminal and they travel across the synapse and bind with receptors in the postsynaptic terminal or dendrite. Now this action potential or this signal that's being moved around uh, is considered an all or none response. There's no half uh, action potential. The nerve, uh, correction, the neuron either fires or it doesn't fire. Uh, so the individual neuron isn't able to change how hard it fires. It's either firing or not firing. And for a large stimulus, what will happen is multiple neurons will fire. And then for a small stimulus, only a few neurons will fire. Uh, so this is how we get that different uh, perception of our senses. Uh, but each individual neuron carries the same strength and speed of message along it. Now, the body has what's called the threshold potential. This is the threshold uh, which a stimulus needs to reach before it's going to stimulate that action potential. And the importance of this is if we didn't have threshold potential, the neurons would be firing from all sorts of very, very small stimulus. And this would overload our senses and cause the neurons and nervous system to burn out. The way that the action potential is propagated along the surface of a neuron is a bit like a chain reaction. So you have one site uh, that is stimulated and causes this action potential, and that action potential stimulates the site next to it, causing action potential there. So it moves like a wave along the length of the neuron. And we're going to look into more detail as how that works now. So the first thing we need to know is that living cells have different charges inside and outside them. And this is because of the different concentration of ions. Uh, and in particular here, we're talking about sodium and potassium ions. And I'm going to use the chemical symbol for these because it's easier to write. So sodium is Na plus and potassium is K plus. Uh, so firstly, just to explain this diagram that I'm going to be using, uh, we have the extracellular fluid. So this is outside of the neuron. And we have the cytosol inside the neuron. Uh, and then we have the plasma membrane surrounding that neuron. So if we think of this as somewhere along the axon, uh, with the inside of the axon at the bottom and the outside of the axon at the top. Now across the plasma membrane are these ion channels. And we have the uh, voltage-gated sodium channels, uh, as well as the potassium channels. And these are proteins that sit across that plasma membrane uh, and allow those different ions to move through them uh, because of their three-dimensional structure. Uh, and also, sm there's a small but important point, uh, these activation gates on the top of the sodium channels, uh, and there's an inactivation gate on the bottom of the sodium channel. Okay, um, to start with, we call it resting state, so when a nerve is not being fired, and outside the nerve, or the neuron, uh, there are more positive ions than there are negative ions. So therefore, it's a positive charge as opposed to on the inside where there's a higher proportion of negative charges. So we've got it charged this way. We also have on the outside of the neuron more sodium ions and on the inside more potassium ions. This change from the inside to the outside and the amount of ions there is called the membrane potential. And because there is more negative 
ions on the inside of the membrane, we say that the membrane has 70 millivolts at this stage. So it's down in the negative, being more negative on the inside. What happens is uh, something will stimulate the neuron, causing this voltage-gated ion channel of uh, sodium to open up, allowing sodium to come into the nerve or neuron. Uh, the reason it does this is because it's positive on the outside, negative on the inside, so that is then drawn uh, or is attracted to those negative ions, so it will diffuse across the membrane. If this, and it's called depolarization, is great enough, that will then cause all the other uh, sodium channels around it to open up and also depolarize. And this starts that wave or that chain reaction that I was talking about before. And this causes uh, more and more of these sodium ions to move into the neuron. Uh, so here, if we were to graph this, uh, that threshold's bringing it up. And as more and more of those sodium ions move in, it becomes more and more positive within the neuron. Okay, so we see this rising stage of the action potential here. So what we end up with is more positive ions inside the neuron and less outside. So we've got lots of sodium in here making it positive. And this is the top or the crest of our action potential. What will then happen is the potassium ion channels will open and because of this uh, membrane potential, uh, so having that negative on the outside and positive on the inside, those positive potassium ions are going to move to the outside. And this is going to, again, decrease uh, the amount of positive ions inside and return the uh, membrane potential uh, down to that negative side. Uh, so once again, this has happened now, uh, these potassium ions have moved out, and we have our negative on in the inside and positive on the outside. Once it gets down to a point that's low enough, uh, these sodium activation gates are going to close uh, because the voltage has dropped significantly, as well as these potassium ion channels are going to always close. And like the inactivation channels uh, in the potassium, this closing takes a little bit longer. So what it does is it overshoots the amount of ions that are necessary to restore resting potential. And we end up in this uh, undershoot here, so we get lower than that minus 70 millivolts. To summarize this on the graph, we have our resting potential, which is about minus 70 millivolts. Uh, a stimulus causes those sodium channels to open, uh, bringing more positive, becoming less negative inside the neuron. Uh, if that reaches the threshold potential, all the sodium channels around it will also open, uh, causing that large spike uh, in the amount of positive sodium ions inside the neuron. Once it reaches that peak of action potential, uh, it's now positive, uh, po so positive inside the neuron, negative outside the neuron. The potassium ion channels then open, uh, and those potassium ion channels get the potassium ions from inside the neuron to go outside the neuron because they're attracted to those ne that negative charge outside. So as they diffuse across the membrane, we get a decrease uh, in that voltage, uh, restoring our negative or resting potential. And because of the lag time in those sodium channels, a uh, correction, potassium channels closing, uh, we get this undershoot that is then corrected restoring us to our resting potential. Now you may have noticed that I've accounted for the change uh, in membrane potential uh, through the movement of sodium and potassium ions. What I haven't accounted for is that now we have on the outside of the neuron uh, 
uh, less sodium ions and more potassium ions than we want. And on the inside, we have more sodium ions and less potassium ions. Now, this uh, discrepancy is sorted out by a sodium and potassium ion pump. And what it does is it actively pumps those uh, ions back to uh, the right side of the membrane. Uh, so the potassium on the inside and the sodium on the outside. And what this does uh, is restores back to that uh, resting potential so that the nerve or neuron can be fired again. Now this period that it takes to restore those sodium and potassium ions to where they're supposed to be is referred to as the refractory period. And during this time, the neuron is not able to fire even if it is stimulated with a stimulus. In this video, we've talked about nervous signals being electrochemical uh, along the surface of the neuron, being a change in potential caused by the movement of potassium and sodium ions across the membrane. Uh, we've also talked about neurotransmitters, chemicals that transmit messages across the synapse. We've talked about the action potential being the signal that gets sent along the surface of the neuron. Uh, and stimulates this wave or chain reaction. The threshold potential, which is the amount of stimulus required to stimulate this action potential, and why it's necessary to stop neurons from firing from small stimulus. We've talked about the propagation uh, of the message or the action potential along the surface of the neuron and how that works. And we've talked about the refractory period, uh, restoring that uh, membrane potential back to its resting state. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.